So I know what you're already thinking, another optic video, I know, I know, but come on, man, nobody else streams their scrim, so we're learning from optic today, and we're talking about how they made an insane comeback against the Florida Mutineers in a scrim. Their backs were against the wall, Mutineers had 238 points, and they had to link together multiple hills in a row to make it happen, and that's what we're talking about today. I'm very excited to get into it for you, so let's get right into it. Let's go. So in this match, they're playing on Garrison again against the Mutineers, who's been playing very, very good Call of Duty lately, and this was their first scrim of the day against the Mutineers, and so they come out pretty flat, pretty slow, and they are not playing well. They're not getting their trades. They're not really communicating very well. They blatantly allowed a spawn flip on P3. That was really bad. A lot of things were not going right for them, just overall not playing fundamentally good Call of Duty. And then something just clicked into place for them and they started frying. And so we're gonna talk about a few things that they did to kind of turn the tables, the things that had to start happening for them to be able to make a comeback like they did. So let's talk about it. So what you're seeing here is when it's about to peak at its ugliest, it's currently 217 to 209. It ends up becoming 237 to 132. So they are down bad. But our first clip here is when things start to shift for them and they start getting a little bit of momentum. And so what you're gonna see here is how Dashy plays very patiently for Skump to get this pinch after he died right there. And then Envoy plays off of that very well. So check that out. We'll talk about it a little bit more afterwards. Let's watch. Come trash, come trash right now. Stop green. green at me. Stop oh, rails yeah, two green, two green. Up green. One, one to hill, one to hill. Top cat, top cat dead. One guy's dead. Up green, Caesar. Up yeah, green, Caesar. Yeah. And Neptune's low mid as well. Neptune's on time for a little weak. One, one top cat, top cat, top cat. I don't see you top floating, top floating, top floating. I'm dead, dude. I'll be in hell, hang on. One's low mid, low mid, Jerry. Low mid, low mid, Jerry. One's top green. I don't see low mid. Floating dead. Two top, two top. Yo, both in time. time, they're both in time. Both looking at me. Nice, we yeah, go. So. I have time though. I'm pushing out lights, I'm pushing out lights. So there you go, Envoy finds a nasty three piece. I'm actually gonna show Envoy's perspective here as well because he was streaming this, so we can talk about that a little bit more. But what I really like is how Dash, he plays very patiently around the hill trying to play his life because he knows Skump is about to pinch. So you're seeing that on the mini map there, Dashy's dancing around while Skump is hitting the pinch. Skump's able to get there in time to find the kills, free up the map, and then communicates with Envoy. And now what you're seeing here is Envoy's perspective of the situation, how he comes in, and he's hearing Skump's call outs and reacting to what he heard between him and Dashy. And then Envoy flies in, finds a big three piece to give him a little bit of momentum and kind of give him a little belief that, okay, this is possible. We can make it happen. And then after this next hill, you really see that come through here in the next clip. And that's what we're talking about now. So like I said, you have to pay attention to how much better the communication is in this clip versus what we were just seeing even there. And even there, that was better than what it was earlier on in the game. So I love how they set up here on P1. Set up here is based off their communication with each other about who is watching what. Make sure that they have the mid push covered. They make sure that they have vents covered. They've got the lights covered. They've got control of top bridge. So they really have full on map control in this setup here allowing them all to maximize their positioning very, very well. And that comes into play here. So this time I'm actually gonna line up Skump and Envoy's perspectives so that you can see what they're both seeing at once and why this communication and these lines of sight are so important. So let's check it out. Edge your lights, stay down. Two bricks, two bricks. Yeah, I'll look at your vent, I'll look at your vent. They're gonna be two green, two green. I'll leave vent. The bottom mid's open. I think it's our rails. Research, bro. Research, research. research. Oh, team team I have their side. Look, look, our little bit. Lights too. Lights not hurt. Not hurt there. I'm Put my cat. I know. I'm holding. One's low square. One's low square. Go pick up our little bit. Yeah. He wanted a small. Low square. Looking vent. They're gonna be they're gonna be top green. They're gonna be top green. Top green for sure. Top green for sure. Top green. Okay. Oh man, it's so good. So I love the communication there from Optic. Envoy's so good at this. It's one of his best qualities is how much he talks, how much he communicates his lines of sight and really helps direct the map in that way, making sure that they're watching all angles and Envoy's really, really good at that. But then you see that like once they get those kills, they start pushing out for map control because they know, well, if we don't flip these spawns, if we don't get control of P2, we're gonna lose the map. Obviously after a really good hold where they communicate very, very well, they're watching all the angles, they're trading the kills extremely effectively, they're maximizing their lines of sight, and they're overall just doing a great job of holding the hill. You even hear the gas from formal like, yo, we can win this. We can we can do this right here. And you need that positive energy once in a while to kind of infuse your team. And then you really hear the intensity pick up here as they start believing like, okay, yeah, we can win this. 
And that's what we're going to hear in the second part of this clip here as we see how they end up winning this game. So after that incredible hold from Scum's POV, you're going to see that he pushes out. He ends up dying, but his call out is crucial for Envoy and for Dashy to end up having the map control and the ability to push towards the spawns that they need to be able to flip the spawns, which allows them to secure P2 and give them a chance in this game. And so that's incredibly important. So again, we're going to show both perspectives. This time you're going to be hearing Envoy's audio more forward because they're playing for these spawns and it's insanely important in this first half of the clip and I absolutely love how they do this and they push for the spawns this is crucial when they get those kills they're counting them and you're going to hear that like you know one down two down three down or counting the names at the least and then pushing out towards the spawns to get control and flip them for their advantage and that allows them to play for this p2 time and have the chance to win the game here so let's check it out they're going to be top green it's up green for sure up green for sure. top green okay one is 100% top green. Invent, invent. Josiah, I need help. I'm here. Top green dead, top green dead. Actually, I want to pause it real quick right there because I love how Envoy asked for the help there. Yo, Josiah's in vents. I need help. And Formal immediately reacts to go help him inside vents. That's, again, just good teamwork and how teams should be playing together there is when you ask for that help, they got to come and help you. And a lot of times that communication can be lost and obviously you got to know when to ask for help and when not to ask for help or whatever it is and envoy does a great job of doing that there and formal helps him right there finds the kill and that opens up the spawns for him and allows him to spawn a little bit closer to the hill which therefore gives him a better chance of pushing for the spawns here in a second so let's keep playing it because that's some really really good stuff from them and you're gonna see now how envoy turns that kill into pushing for these spawns and really putting pressure on them at the back this is really good, COD. Let's roll it. Nice. They're both there. Both 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 I'm hitting out alley. I'm hitting out alley. Back alley. Back alley. Dead. 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 Good time. Good time. Nice. I'm holding bricks. They could spawn in the back on me. I'm getting the time. I'm second time of the year. Second time of the year. My square's open. He could go. He could go alley. So there you go. They secure the spawns. Now all they gotta do is hold this hill, and they can make the insane comeback happen. So what I love how Scump plays this is they've gotta be a little bit careful about the back of the map and what the spawns could look like here because they could potentially split spawn back way behind in the back corner of the map there. So that's what you're going to hear them talking about here. But I love again how Scump is so quick to come to Envoy's help here inside of Bricks and the second Envoy starts shooting and then Scump reacts very, very well. The mental processing is so good. You're going to see that here. Let's check it out. Help in the back, bro. Yeah, I'm helping the back. I have time. I'm looking up right. I'm looking small, right? Are you small? Up, you small? I have small. I have small. Okay, look the back set, so. Yo, yeah, one's deep back, one's deep back though. Alright, I'm looking okay. my small. There's two deep back, two deep back. Alright, I give up. Yeah. He could be small. Oh, and small, and small, Josiah. You're watching small. Down, 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 oh, deep back too. Two deep back, one to alley, 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 and small. small, 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 small. There's three, all three in the back, last two in the back. Nice, all that. Alright, one more pause there. And again, Scump, nasty. Things you absolutely love to see from him with the reactions there and the anticipation is so crucial to find that kill at the back. And if he doesn't, Envoy doesn't spawn close there. And things get a little bit more crazy, probably allows for the top green push to come through and they could potentially lose the game. There was a lot riding on that one kill. So it's a pretty crazy big moment. But now you're going to see again here. I love how Envoy and Dashy play off of each other inside bricks here. Again, just a really simple setup. And I love optic setup as a whole here where Formal and Scump are playing in the hill. Envoy and Bruce sit inside bricks, watching each other's entrances, getting their trades. Game over, GG's. Let's check it out. Yeah, I'm, I'm going square. I'm watching the back with Dill. You want to double this with me? Yeah, yeah. I have your back. I have your back. I'm watching up green. They're going to hit small again. They're going to hit small again. Yeah, we have it. We have it. Yeah, we have it. I'm helping you top green. One's in green. One in green at least. Small dead. Small dead. Nice. Good job. Stay on the stand. Make sure they can. Yeah, I'm getting in front. I'm getting in front. Yo, that was just. Yo, that was gross. What the hell? Wow. There you go, man. That's some awesome Call of Duty. A pretty lit comeback for Optic as well. Obviously, crazy tough stuff for the Mutineers. They could have played so many things differently in that last few minutes there to, to win this game. All they had to do was get a few seconds here on, on P2 and they would have had it. That's why I was so surprised with how aggressively they pushed towards P1 at the end of that hill. Didn't make much sense and definitely not their best plays. I'm sure they'll be talking about that one afterwards. And Optic played this very, very well. 
And overall, man, I think there's just so much you can take away there from their communication, from their positioning, how they play off of each other in the small moments, the ways that Envoy asks for help, the ways that he communicates with Dashi about watching each other's flanks and getting each other's trades, how Skump is aware of the minimap, aware of where Envoy dies, plays for those big time kills at the end. A lot of awesome moments from Skump there. And I couldn't imagine the hype in this moment if this happened in a LAN environment. It would have been absolutely insane. And uh, hopefully we can get back to LAN one day. So if, if you guys enjoyed this video, if you guys learned something, like, comment, subscribe, share the video if you guys really enjoy it. I do appreciate it. I'm trying this full time and I cannot do that without you guys. So I really, really do appreciate it. But as always, guys, I'm your boy, Sylvester Lee. And guys, we will see you next time. I'm out.